episode one just came out. I was a huge fan of The Mandalorian when it came out. I wasn't a big fan of Star Wars before they started doing Disney Plus shit, honestly. I wasn't a big fan of Star Wars. I mean, Star Wars has always been cool conceptually to me as a child. Like, even, like, the fucking stormtroopers and the helmets. Like, I had, like, little Lego toys and the lightsabers. I mean, that hit all the buttons for me as a young boy, right? But the original trilogy was too old for me for some reason. Like, it was... Um, I don't know, it was dated, I couldn't connect to it, and then the prequels are obviously the prequels, um, so that really didn't really connect with me. I really like the first one of the reboot, yeah, that's my issue, like, I, 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 I grew up with Star Wars, I guess, because it was cool conceptually, but none of the movies ever, like, made me go, wow, like, I was really into Marvel, uh, even when Iron Man 1 came out, and I was, I mean, I wasn't that young, but I was still pretty young. Um, and yeah, fucking Book of, Book of Boba. The, the, it was fucking incredible. It was awesome. I loved it. Even when the fucking new uh, reboot fucking uh, trilogy came out. I liked The Force Awakens, the first one. Especially the aesthetic shots of the Lady Rey uh, fucking climbing through a Star Destroyer to get scraps. I, I liked a lot of the beats from The Force Awakens. But, you know, the, the new trilogy has its issues. It's not what this video is about. I'm not a huge Star Wars fucking mind anyways. But for some reason, when I watched the first episode of The Mandalorian, it was Star Wars, but it wasn't in-your-face Star Wars, deep lore all the time, crazy ghosts and more exposition. You know what I mean? That's what Star Wars is, is, is all about. Like, the big movies are always pushing this, the story of the Jedi versus the Sith, right? That, that's, that's the main Star Wars story. Uh, and this is in the Star Wars universe, which is a cool-ass universe, but it's its own really good story talking about the mandalorian specifically right now because that's why i got really into it i really like mando with his fucking shiny armor you know like that's really fucking cool and then this weird mandalorian guy who has all these rules for himself and then to see boba fett get his own move or his own series again boba fett was never one of those characters for me per se that i was like wow this guy is really cool because those old movies never really like wow in your face did it for me so i never really had any connection to Boba Fett, but I did create a connection to the Mandalorian when, when that came out. And now to see another Mandalorian after the Mandalorian season two, you know, reintroduce Boba into the fucking universe or whatever the fuck. Uh, and it's really good, man. It's good. He's the crime lord, but he wants to do it his own way. Uh, spoilers, obviously, for this entire video. It's going to be a bunch of clips put together every time I watch the episode. But yeah, man, he's, uh, he, it's fucking nice. He's just like, uh, he's, he killed... Jabba the Hutt, obviously, in the in the Mandalorian season two. I'm pretty sure that was that one. And then he had the lady who played um, Agent May in the uh, Agents of Shield, right? That actress. And uh, she's cool. They have a cool dynamic. She she's a, a, a lethal assassin. Obviously, they're in the village at some point. They get they get you know because Jabba takes over after having been uh, fucking you know after having escaped from the Sarlacc creature and then getting abused by um what are they called tuscan raiders right and in the end that beautifully uh, ties itself up because um the tuscan raiders actually accept jabba as like a noble warrior after he slays this massive six-limbed creature in the desert uh searching for water because because the tuscan raiders accidentally enslaved them for a bit but i'm sure boba is forgetful that way so yeah he's gonna rule uh rule rule with a new Fist, it's gonna be a fucking story about ruling a, a criminal underlord, I guess, who is ruling with respect, because these Tuscans beat him the fuck up, and then he comes back and, you know, saves them, he didn't save the other slave, which is unfortunate, but, but alright, he stabbed him in the back, then again, the Tuscan Raiders beat the fuck out of him, but that's fine, I guess, and, um, you know, he, he, they have to dig for water, and then the other guy, because he's with one other slave, it's like this pink, pink guy, Pink alien, right? Not trying to be racist. Who would pink people be anyways? Pink? Who's pink? I guess you could could like be racist and say Native Americans. But they say they say they're red though, right? Nobody says pink. Who who pink? I guess white people. No, but this alien was actually pink. It was I'm not trying to like, you know, fucking uh boil it down or whatever. He was literally pink. I'm pretty sure like if you if you color picked up picked him, you know, a screenshot of him and you just boop, 
you know, you, you'd get a pretty pink color. He was pretty fucking pink, the other slave he was with, because Bobo was enslaved with another alien. That alien was pink, right? And then that alien didn't make it, because the sick limbed creature uh, completely destroys him, because they accidentally dig him up, because they're dig digging for water. They're digging for these little fruits, then and you uh, break them, and there's water inside, you know? I don't know how that works, but that's pretty cool. And um, and at the end, you know, fucking Boba finds only only finds one, and then he drinks it himself. And then the guy is like, "Yo, you can't drink that." And then he tries to, because there's only one Tuscan Raider with them, right, on this water quest, I guess, because they're like slaves, right, just like have to dig for water. And the guy wants to hit him, and then the uh, Boba is like, "Easy, youngling, I just want some water," or whatever he says. And this guy is fucking huge, by the way. Like I I I. I I don't remember stormtroopers ever being this fucking buff, but this guy is like, you know, who's the guy? Um, Dave ba 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 Bautista, what's his name? Who played Drax in uh, in Guardians of the Galaxy in the MCU? This guy is huge, Boba Fett, the actor. He's, he's a massive guy because at one point he's in the sleeping pod because he's healing from all his fucking fights and wounds he's suffered from. Because in the desert, he, his face is all fucking like scorched up, right, from the desert sun. He's just like a white guy. I mean, as a, he's Australian, I guess, so he can take take a beating. But he can't take that much of a fucking beating, right? Um, so yeah, he's in his healing pod, present time. Um, and then he gets all these dreams and that's when we get the exposition, which is really clever. Because the exposition starts at the beginning. It's like 10 minutes of exposition right away of how the Tuscans took him and then, you know, how they fucking beat him the fuck up. And then they you get taken out of that expositionary world because he wakes up from the sleeping pod, right? Because it's his dream. He has these reoccurring dream PTSD probably, right? Or whatever the fuck. And then later when he gets beat up because some ninja gang comes to attack him uh, in the middle of the town. You, you get back to that flashback. It's such a clever way to, to, way to do it. It wasn't like disruptive at all. And I loved the exposition, even though I never really cared for Boba Fett. And like, I, apparently in the comics, he makes it out of the Sarlacc pit anyways. Like, it, he, he like infamously lives on after seemingly dying in the, in the, the original trilogy, right? But um, yes, yeah, seeing all that, seeing what he went through, they did a really good job making you like normally they just tell you all the shit a character's been through right maybe because it's too graphic to show or whatever the fuck like with black widow for example you don't show her getting her fucking insights taken out right but i guess in black widow they show a lot of her trauma or of her, of her traumatizing childhood but it didn't show any beating or whatever like this guy normally when, when they talk about like beating like fucking you know characters being beat the fuck up or whatever or being fucking tortured or whatever they do it off screen uh most of the time and this show just straight up shows you all the trauma boba fett went through that that hardened him up to be this really tough guy but still in the end he wants to rule with like mercy but by getting respect from people right and i guess that makes sense because he's the original i mean he is a clone and the clones are are made um to to either be good people, maybe they're modified, or they're based on a guy who's just inherently a good person, which was apparently Django Fett. Well, I don't know if he was necessarily a good person, but maybe he just didn't shine in the prequels. I don't know. But, um... Yeah, fucking... Loved it. Book of Boba, I'm here for it. Let's, uh, let's go. Every Wednesday from now, I'll record, like, a little bit of a video, and I'll put it together for a great episode of MD Trip. Thanks for watching, and like, subscribe, and enjoy the next uh, part of the video, and I'm excited for next week to watch the rest.